catapult technology, prepare their employees for other certification exams, and have these certifications make catapult a leader in the industry and give it real-world competitive advantage when bidding on and winning new work. Katie Kaywood, HR Generalist and Corporate Professional Development Administrator at Catapult, is a native of Michigan and a Michigan State University alumnus. She resides in Bethesda, Maryland with her husband and two young children. Katie has been in the human resources field for nine years and holds both PHR and CEBS certifications. While the majority of her career has been focused on employee benefits administration and general HR functions, she began working with Catapult Technology in the summer of 2008 to assist with the implementation and day-to-day -day administration of the Skillsoft online learning tool and has since utilized it to help enhance the overall professional development program for the company. Now please join me in welcoming Katie Kaywood. Um, we had a hard time training new managers 
whether they renewed the company or promoted into new management roles with you know, very basic functions like how to do a timesheet and doing you know, performance evaluations, introducing people to professional development activities. And of course, there was the, the committee that put this together was about four people and they all said, well, I don't want to administer it. Well, I don't want to either, I'm too busy. Maybe we should hire somebody. So that's when they decided to hire me. We decided to go with Skills Optic in July of 2008. We went ahead and purchased a three-year license for everyone in the company, including all of the major categories uh, in the catalog. When building a certification program, these are the main steps that I try to follow. First off, in this case, uh, the primary focus was on PMP. So the first thing I had to do was, and I had no idea what PMP was when I started with the company, was to do some research. Call PMI, read, check the website, read the entire PMP handbook, cover to cover, because I had no idea what PMP was, uh, never had any exposure to that. Uh, so I did learn about the application process, what were the requirements, the prerequisites to apply, uh, any association memberships and discounts, any way I can save the company money because we were going to be fronting, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars in exam fees for all these individuals. Uh, then put, a, put together a learning program. Because the information is all over the catalog, between the courses and uh, the test prep and the mentoring service link, and the, you can find the pinbox if you went through books 24-7, I wanted to try to find a way to put everything together in one little nugget so that I could assign it out to individual people and they wouldn't have to go searching through the tool because while they went live with it, most people were not really into fishing around right away. They were like, okay, let me do my compliance training right away, get that out of the way. But this way I was able to assign everything and keep it, keep it together. Uh, and then the biggest issue I had with people were saying, oh, well, I like the classroom learning format. I want to go out and do a PMP boot camp, spend two or three or four thousand dollars, because I sit, in this, I sit in a little classroom for a week straight while, you know, collecting time on Catapult's dime. And get that all crunched in in one, in one little package and then go take my test. But we just purchased this nice, nice online tool for everyone, so we were not so willing anymore to send them out for two or three or four thousand dollars for the train. That also did not include the exam fee. Uh, then after we got through putting together the blended learning idea, I helped them with the application process itself as much as I could, because again, I can't do it for them. Uh, and then once they're in, they've taken their test, monitoring their progress going forward, and then helping them once they've gotten their certification with their renewal because, again, we already had people who were certified who needed help getting through to their renewals without having to retest. And then helping the people who just certified get on their feet and get going with that process so they're not waiting until the end of the three years to renew. Uh, in, this, in the February 2009, six months after I started, I went on my new leave. Uh, with my first child, and in April of 2009, I returned to work and was told, well, we decided as Catapult, we're going to now have all of our project managers become PMP certified. This is going to be a big uh, promotional factor for the company because we're moving out of our 8A small business protection and we're moving into the mid-sized firm range and this was going to be a big you know, proposal winner for Catapult. So all of our people were going to be PMP certified but the big driver for that, of course, was in 2009 when the PIMBOK was going to be changing from the third to the fourth edition, effective July 1 of that year. So we had from roughly mid-April when I was handed this assignment to the end of June to get everyone tested, get, go through the application process, get approved, get scheduled, find a seat at Prometric, and get tested by the end of June. Uh, and any, uh, they also made the policy that any new project managers whether they were hired or promoted, had to obtain their PMP within six months, or they had to be moved on at that point if they didn't already have their certification. The application process, uh, just like for the application, uh, an employee or an individual needs to have a four-year degree, three years of project management experience, $4,500 for meeting and directing projects, and 35 hours of project management education. Or if they don't have that, then they can go with a high school diploma, five years of project management experience, 7,500 hours and 35 hours. Since SkillSoft is a registered education provider with PMI, 
All 35 hours of the project management requirement can be fulfilled by taking the prep courses in Catapult. Well, we, we branded it Catapult eLearning, uh, or in Stillport. However, if they go through all of the prep courses, they're going to end up with 55 to 60 <coughs> PEUs. So they're going to more than meet the requirement just by doing the prep material for the exam. The next step was to create a learning program for them. Are, are you guys familiar with creating learning programs using the LMS? Skillport. It's quite a handy little tool when you're prepping people for certifications and what I learned by getting these people certified, we had about five or six people all at one time that had to get certified by the end of that cutoff date. I started adapting it to all my other certification programs. Build the learning program. Start off with all of the courses available for that prep exam, for that exam. Uh, add the practice test link. A link to the live online mentoring service if it's available and a copy of whatever the official guidebook happens to be. And in this case, the both third and fourth edition pin box were available at the time. So I put them both in there because I wanted them to see what's, what they're working on now, but also if they can't make it in before the cutoff, and we had a couple people that missed, that, that got approved for, to sit for the exam, but they were out of seats at Prometric. They literally couldn't take the test by the cutoff and had to wait to, to do it on actually the fourth edition. So having the fourth edition pin box, they could see what the changes were and prep for it uh, was helpful. Uh, of course, building this, this tool, and now of course I don't have large groups of people doing certifications all at once, um, building the learning program with all this information in it already for them and assigning it out to those individuals in their my plan is how I help them get ready for their exam. It keeps everything all in one chunk, they don't have to search for everything. And I apply that to all the other certifications. As I mentioned before, many people still prefer that classroom style learning environment. They like to sit in a chair, have someone up front talking to them. They just they feel like they learn better that way. And that was the biggest obstacle I had of convincing people this material really is worth your time. It's not a waste of time. You're not just sitting in front of your computer listening to something and not reading. You can treat it like a classroom. You can set that computer in front of you, just like I do with my PHR stuff, and listen to it play, just like it's a teacher. You can Only now you have the option of stop, rewind, go back. So if you have a question about something or you miss something, you can go back. Take your notes like you normally do. You have the mentoring services to ask people. And also with this group, we had Again, five, six, seven people getting certified all the time. So in order to facilitate and give them that classroom type feel where they're getting feedback and asking questions, maybe a different way uh, than what the, how they would have asked them to get that support from their peers, I held regularly, weekly study group sessions after business hours in the headquarters office. Now, because of course, I had people in Denver and I had people in Virginia and, I had, and we're based in Maryland, uh, I had people all over the place, according, including about three or four people at headquarters that were able to travel in. So we did webinars, uh, so they could actually see the screen that I was working off of. They could hear all of us chit-chatting back and forth. I could go online with the mentor on the screen and they could see it. I could hand off control to someone remotely and they could type in the questions because I certainly did not have any idea what it is they were talking about with the pin box stuff. Uh, we started getting the ideas for how to handle the topics, what we were going to do with these weekly sessions. Again, I'm not totally familiar with the PMBOK or the things that they felt that they needed to study. So I asked them, well, what is, let me know what you guys want to cover. Is there a particular section of the PMBOK that you feel like you need to discuss with others and you feel might be, or is there something you have mastered that you think you can help everyone else with? Now we arranged uh, for a current or recently certified individual to come in to every session and act as a mentor for them to discuss the application process with them, the testing environment, what's it like for people who hadn't been up to a Prometric testing center to walk into those like soundproofy type rooms, sit down in your little cubicle with headphones on if necessary, with your little scratch paper, sit down and take a test. And it's pretty sterile in there. It's not a you know classroom where you're normally sitting down and taking a test in your familiar space. You're kind of isolated. Um, I also helped with providing feedback. I sat there. I didn't really participate. I tried to facilitate the meetings and keep things moving along, but I sat in the back and took notes and kept track of what was going on in the room and then provided feedback after the meeting. And our inaugural session, the first time that we did it, uh, I sent out, I had an overview 
uh, PowerPoint slides again and just reintroduce to them Skillport. Okay, we've had it for six months now, you all have done your compliance training, but you haven't really gone in to look for this kind of material yet. So let me go over the learning program that I assigned you, the practice test, the Books 24-7 library, how to find other guidebooks and practice tests that are out there. Uh, using the mentoring service, which we did live right there on the webinar. Uh, reviewing the job aids and the skill briefs and all the other documentation material that was available in Skillport. We did a review, in this, in this case, uh, one individual wanted to review chapters 6 and 7 of the Hitbox, so that was on my agenda for that evening. Uh, and we also went over the online practice test right there in the room, in the practice mode, so that when they answered a question, whether it was right or wrong, gave them the answer, and then a description of why it was correct or incorrect. After each weekly session, uh, I went again and said, okay, this is what went over. What else do you want to go over for the next week? So we did this every week from about mid-April until the beginning of June. Uh, as we went through each session, uh, gradually there were people that were taking the test earlier. So I would check in with their progress on how they went through completing the application. We did, of course, because the deadline was so close. PMI was getting flooded with applications, and that means they felt, oh, look, I guess we can audit a few extra ones while we're at it. Since all these people are trying to cram in at once, let's throw in a few audits. And of our six participants, we had three audits. So they had to go back and document all of those hours of project management experience, all 4,500 of them. They had to go back and document their education. I had someone who was in their 60s who hadn't been to college in 40 years and had to go back to her old university to ask for transcripts. Uh, but when they were going through all of this, we were still during our weekly sessions, so they got to come back and report into what the audit process was like for them, what, they, what kind of documentation were they asking for, so that other people in the room could be ready for that if it happened. Also, you know, when the people did go in and sit down for the exam, we had the people who had tested before, and I had been to Prometric before myself, but when they walked in to take their test last week, what was it like for them? What did they do to prep in the morning? Did they have, you know, a good night's sleep? Did they have breakfast that morning or not? Did they prefer, prefer testing in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, in the later afternoon? Um, how everything, how things worked for them? Again, chapters and topic ideas for discussion in later meetings. And of course, recognizing those that have passed, because everyone who was going out and testing passed on the first try. Once they got their certification, and by the way, all, all but one of our participants in this, in this group in 2009 passed on the first try, the second one passed on the second attempt. Having had to do the fourth edition on the second attempt, because it was past the deadline. Uh, once they had their certification, I was not content. I'm, I'm an HR person at heart, benefits administrator. My job is to go out there and help people every day. I answer phone calls all day. We will have problems. It's my job to solve them as quickly as possible so that they can go out and do their job and do what wins catapult money and generates money for the business. So they have to maintain their, their certification every three years. Uh, they have to earn 60 PDU credits every year, or every three year time period. There's no maximum for education PDUs, but they can do, of course, they can obtain PDU credit by doing stuff in their, within uh, their profession. But there's a, max, there's a cap of 45 every three years on that. But there is no cap on the education credits. Again, since Skillsoft is a registered education provider with PMI, all 60 PDUs can be done online for free. This was another expense saver for Catapult because we spent a lot of time and money organizing and sending people out to activities to earn their last minute PDU credit because they waited until two months before their review and had to go and pay money to go to, to events to earn 10, 20, 30 PDUs because they had waited too long. But now it can be done essentially to the employee for free because Catapult had already paid for their license. That were starting to come to me and say, I need to find ways to get PDU credit. I 
and that bull's not quite so willing anymore to start paying for them to go to conferences and <coughs> training courses that were several thousand dollars to obtain PU credit at the last minute. So we had this 11th hour scramble. Oh my god, I'm, gonna, I'm supposed to renew next week, next month. What do I do? And preferably find it for me for free, which everyone knows is impossible in the commercial world now. Um, so the, I started with what I call the PMP initiative within Catapult. Uh, to prevent this 11th hour scramble, take the guesswork out of finding things for people because we're like, they would see the catalog, it's huge. There's 4,000 courses in there. there. It grows every day. What's, wh how, how are they just supposed to know what is PMI pre-approved material for project management? So I decided to put together an initiative. Every quarter, I put together, based on whatever topic or theme, I, we have an executive coach who works directly with all the project managers, so I could talk to him, get a feel for what kinds of things were they dealing with now, what kinds of project management issues, whether that's with the customer, with internal employees, what kinds of things are they needing to touch on, or do they need remedial training on. Um, so what I did is put together, go through the credentialing link, through the Skillport uh, site, if you're all familiar with that, there is a PDU catalog, so that you can go to the catalog but only see the courses that are available that are pre-approved by PMI for credit. Takes the guesswork out of it, but instead of telling people, okay, now go here, now click here, now look at this catalog, and now go through and find stuff for yourself, I took whatever needs I knew were out there, put together three to four to five courses for them into a learning program again, and then assigned it to all of my PMP holders. That way it's right there in their my plan. Everything that's there is pre-approved, and if they did all the ones that I assigned them, that's anywhere between 10 to 15 PDU credits. And I put it together for them quarterly, so if they only did, they don't have to do them all, it's entirely up to them whether they did them or not. Um, but this way, they'd have a go-to place. Well, let me see what's in my mind plan, finding credit. If they did everything that I signed them in a year, they'd need all 60 PDU credits in a year. But this way, they could take one or two here, one or two there, one or two there, and then over the course of the three years, if they didn't meet their 60 PDUs, that was on them. <laughs> yes, I've given you all the, all the information that you need. But because I assigned it to them, and it's in a learning program, I have the ability to track their progress thanks to that handy dandy big brotherish uh, reporting tool. I can see who's doing what of what I have assigned them. And I know based on the nice little uh, catalog with PMI's website, who's certified and when did they certify. I can guesstimate approximately every three years that they've renewed, so I know about when they need to be renewing again. So, if I know how many PDUs they've done through me, and that they're, oh, well, they're due, John Doe is due to recertify in six months. Let me, let me tap his shoulder and say, I noticed you haven't been doing any of the stuff I've been assigning you for free. Yeah. The list, the PDU, uh, the list of who needs to recertify. Um, through PMI's website, they have a directory uh, for, you can, where you can look up by last name, first name, country of origin, uh, who has a certain a current active certification, whether that's CAPM, PMP, or the, or the program management certification. It will give you their date of exam. It won't give you the most recent date that they renewed, but if they show up in the database, that means they're active. If they don't show up in the database, that means they either never certified or have expired and did not renew on time. Sure. Uh, the initiative uh, with doing the renewals um, really didn't take me that much time at all. Um, I'm sitting at my computer, I'm very familiar with using Skillport. Uh, so for me, it was more or less the, the time that I spent, I spent more time working with our executive coach and asking the PMs, okay, give me some ideas for themes or topics that you want me to touch on and put some similar courses together for. But that was really more by email, so it was more of just waiting for a reply. Uh, once I had my topic and idea, it was more or less 10-15 minutes to go through the catalog, find some appropriate courses, and assign it to everybody. 
Originally, through the when I put the project together in 2009, we had six or seven PMP candidates at the time. But overall, we have approximately 35 PMP certified employees. So it wasn't just about getting people certified at that point. That was about getting the leftover people who hadn't certified yet, getting them taken care of before the PMP switched over to the fourth edition. But I also had 30 other people with PMP certifications across the company that needed support. So this is what brought on the PMP initiative. So I'm starting to get a lot of questions from them. Help. <laughs> Please help me. Matt. Are, are you doing similar initiatives around other certifications? So yes. I guess the question could be, instead of the PMP initiative, the blank idle or CompTIA initiative, are you doing the same process for those? The question was, am I adapting this PMP initiative to apply to other <coughs> certifications that have renewal requirements that are similar? The answer is yes. I'm going to touch on that in a minute. Um, specifically related to CISSP for now, but I'm looking to expand that to the CompTIA stuff when that information becomes more available this summer. Yes? Yes, it was, it was more geared toward just giving them what they need right that second, put it in their mind plan so that they're not having to go out and looking for stuff. And it's geared toward what is relevant to our project managers at that given time. Yes, through the, through the credentialing report, they can review what PDU credit stuff that they were already doing. And our compliance training and our ethics training, our annual stuff, also counted for PDU credit. So they could keep track for themselves, and I did go over that with them um, with some training sessions. But most of the time it was them calling me on the phone, needing a little handhold. But that's, uh, that's HR in general. It's, that's everything with HR. Oh, and while I got you on the phone, how about my insurance premium? <laughs> you know. It's, it was, I, they wanted me to be the go-to person, so I made that happen for, for those people. That was their point of contact, so. Since, again, to get back on, on track here, uh, since I was able to track what they were doing with the reporting tool, I was able to identify those people who might need a little push, a little reminder, hey, you're supposed to renew in two months or in three months. Um, Here's some more courses for you to do. Do you need any help finding material? Because I also can't track when they're doing stuff with their professional uh, credits, those 45 that they can do that are non-educational. So if they had already met their requirement, I wouldn't necessarily know that. So that was my way to communicate with them individually to see if they needed my help. Because sometimes they didn't, which was miraculous. <laughs> Most of the time they did. This is a copy of the, the email that I sent out every quarter. Um, getting the most from their PMP certification, giving my uh, an information about the theme for that quarter. This was quarter three of 2011. Uh, what the topic title was, how many courses were assigned to them, and if they complete them. In this case, it was 18 PDU credits if they did the five courses that I assigned to them. To touch on Matt's question, yes, I did adapt this to other certifications. A lot of our PMP holders weren't just PMP holders. They were CISSP holders as well, if you're familiar with ISC squared. Um, then is, I'm sorry? CISSP? Oh, goodness. It's a Certified Internet Security, some, it's an IT security. It's one yes. of the high tier. <clears throat> Catapult is a, a IT services and help desk administrator company for the federal government. So. Typically, if you're, say, if you're at a GSA help desk or a GSA desk and you call up someone asking for my printer's broken, how do I fix it? You're usually talking to one of my employees, not an actual GSA employee. So we have a lot of IT, everything is sort of, you know, surrounded around by IT requests. But again, I followed my certification steps. I called <coughs> ISC2, I did the research, I read the, the CISSP handbook. This is where I got the graphic from. I asked them, they're, they're pretty vague about their what counts as, in this case, CPEs instead of PDUs. Uh, what kinds of material are they, accept, are they accepting? Uh, because again, now people had their PMPs, they were asking, well, now I need to get my three-year renewal for my CISSP. Is there material and skills soft available? 
while it's not readily identified within Skillport that this is applicable to CISSP, it's not pre-approved by ISC squared, but so I called them up. After a few emails that never got replied to from ISC squared, I just decided to give them a call and ask them, okay, well, if this stuff is pre-approved by BMI and you accept credits for project management education, will this match up? And they said, absolutely. If PMI is willing to accept it as credit for project management, then we'll accept it as well. So, when, that, when I learned that, they have to do, it qualifies as the Group B uh, CPE credit. They can do a maximum of 40 in the three year time span. Um, they have to do others because they have to have a total of 120 for CISSP for the three year time period. But, since I was already assigning this to the PMP people, I just expanded it and added to my email list the CISSP holders, which often were the same people, but there was a handful of others that didn't have PMP but just had the CISSP and back and forth. Additional certifications. Again, we're a federal government contractor. We have a lot of contracts with the DOD, and I know many of you are familiar with the dreaded DOD Directive 8570, and it's multiple revisions over the last year or so. Uh, to quote them directly, uh, the policy which requires information assurance technicians and managers to be trained and qualified to DOD approved baseline requirements, enabling the DOD and the contractor servicing DOD contracts to put the right people with the right skills in the right position to protect DOD information systems. And these are the various levels, this is a chart straight out of the DOD directive, uh, the various levels where you might have employees, and we have people at the IAT one, two, three, all the way down. These are the certification, the baseline certifications that they require for you, for your, as a contractor or as a, the actual federal employee, that you have to have, uh, they were giving us some leeway, but now you have to have it as a contractor. And before you put a butt in the seat, you have to have them certified now. But, as you notice, all of these have prep material available and still work. This is direct from the catalog. List of uh, both the second edition and the most recent 2012 edition of the CISSP exam. There's actually now an entering and test prep available before I put this together. The CompTIA A, plus, Security, plus, Certified Ethical Hacker, and the actual manuals from Books 24 7. CompTIA. Did anyone attend the, one of the CompTIA sessions yesterday? I know I did. Just one, two. Effective January 1, all DOD and contractor personnel and information insurance positions that obtained either the Security Plus, Net Plus, or A Plus to meet their DOD 8570 requirement uh, previously were, if you tested before January 1, you were considered certified for life. You are good to go. You didn't have to worry about it again. But if you certified after January 1, you had to meet the three year renewal requirement. They added, the CompTIA added in to meet up with their ISO certification. Computer based training courses can be used toward those three year renewal CPE credit. Yeah. CE credit. Everyone has a different way of saying it. Some people say CPE, CE. It's all the same thing. <laughs> with Security Plus, which was the major certification for all of our security personnel. Maybe we'll at the WHS at the State Department uh, at some undisclosed locations in the middle of a mountain in Maryland somewhere, which has no address. You drive to a driveway in the middle of nowhere and you go to a guard check. There's no address. Uh, for us to do benefits administration, we had to have special security clearances to go to some of these locations. Uh, but CEU required Security Plus has 50 every three years, 30 and 20 for Net Plus and A Plus, respectively. If you have more than one certification and you meet the requirement for a higher one, it automatically renews your other two or the other one below that as well. So if you had Security Plus and Net or A Plus and you met your Security Plus requirement, it automatically renew your other lower certification. However, I go back. <coughs> DOD clarified and made it a little more public after that that they were not going to recognize your one and done certified for life anymore. Uh, if you certified prior to January 1 and you were certified for life, according to CompTIA, as far as they were concerned, you are certified for life. However, the DOD was not going to recognize it anymore. 
So we had to get everyone enrolled in the CE program no later than June, December 31 of 2011 and get them on the renewal track. Uh, and now that I've gotten through getting everyone certified, getting them in the CE program, now this time of year we're starting to get a lot of renewal uh, fee reimbursements and people are starting to get their renewals now. But again, we had a big push to get everyone certified before the, Jan before the January 1, 2011 deadline because we thought, okay, let's get everyone one and done certified. So I put together the learning program. We have a larger group of people, got them all together. They tend to be on the same contract, so they knew each other already and could do their own study groups within if necessary. I didn't have to host them, um, like I did with PMD. But again, we went through the same process with them. Learning program, sign it out, track it. Help them with their practice, with their test applications, register them with Permetric, get their seats, pay for it, get them certified. Then we had to re enroll them in the CE program. As Matt mentioned, uh, IDLE, uh, are you all familiar with the IDLE certification? Again, this is becoming practically a requirement now for a lot of our federal contracts. Um, and if it's not a requirement on the contract, it's a constant request on an RFP, request for proposals. The, one of the first questions I get from our proposal department all the time, how many foundation people do we have? How many expert people do we have? Do we have any idle masters on board? That's almost always the first question I get from them when it comes to certification information and, and demographics for our company. Skillsoft has been providing constant courseware updates because the idle exam has changed like two or three times in the last, since just when the last started with Catapult 2008, I think it's changed three times. Most recent being the Foundation 2011 version. Um, so that has been integral in helping us keep our people certified. Um, and if you all have a large group of people doing IDLE at the same time, uh, talk to Exit, the certifying body in the US. You can proctor the exam for your employees and get them all done in one shot. Uh, I went to our State Department office and did that for them so that we wouldn't have to keep sending them out piecemeal. We could just get everyone done in one shot. We did a, I did a room full of about 10 people, including some of our subcontractors. But if you all want some information on that, I can give it to you offline. Also, last year in 2011, uh, Cal or Skillsoft added IO intermediate material, the operational support and analysis material. Uh, we had one employee that was going through uh, getting ready for an idle expert. So he had, if you're familiar with the process at all, there's a ton of these little blocks that you have to make between the intermediate life cycle, plus you have to have your foundation certification, managing across the life cycle. There's uh, seven or eight different tests that you have to prep for, and they're pretty intense just to get your, there is no idle intermediate certification. There are many tests, but it's on your way to getting an expert. Uh, and if you are familiar with doing this at all, most of these training courses with the tests involved cost anywhere between $1,500 and $2,000 is the cheapest we were able to find it. Uh, that most of the time did include the test exam, the actual exam fee itself, but other times it didn't and you had to send them out somewhere and pay another $250 for an exam. But we had one person going through that, and with the vendor we were using at the time, his courses were costing anywhere between, again, $1,500 and $2,000 a piece. And we have to do seven or eight of these, it adds up quickly. So we were more than thrilled when Skillsoft decided to add some intermediate material. And the feedback I got from our individual employees that it far and away exceeded and was far more intense than the classroom material that he went through and he spent $2,000. Then I was able to go through the certifying body, purchase a, a voucher for an exam for 250 bucks, and he asked on first try. So we're very anxiously awaiting additional idle intermediate material <laughs> because we'd very much like to have them going forward. Uh, but again, with this material, I put together a learning program for him, put the practice test together, assigned it to his line plan so he's not having to search through everything. Another big thing for us has been Microsoft certifications. Our State Department contract and a couple others are migrating to Windows 7 uh, with their server platforms uh, and with their desktop platforms. Uh, so having people certified already, or at least going through the training material to 
learn how to put the servers together. And implementing Windows 7 in their institutions has been, has been key. Um, and of course, as you all know, Microsoft, every time they have a new software platform, they put out five different certifications for the same software. But Skillsoft has been on top of it the entire time, has been providing up-to-date information every, as soon as I'm looking for the exam and someone comes to me with a question about it, the material's already there. Now, with getting the PMP certification, we of course had our group of people who were required to get it. But we also wanted to encourage others to go out for PMP or CISSP or some of these other higher profile certifications. But how do we do that? How do we encourage them to study like crazy and go through these incredibly rigorous exams and risk failure? Um, how do we incentivize them? Because ultimately, having better employees in the field, having documented, certified people in the field, is it's great for their careers, but it's even better for Catapult. Because this is advertising for Catapult. This is what helps us when we're saying we can meet these, these requirements for your contracts and move forward. So we decided to add a little carrot, a little, a little financial incentive to, to get people motivated because of course that's ultimately what motivates us all is the final bottom line on our paycheck. So we put together a list of financial incentives for each certification. Uh, the, we primarily went off of what was available in Skillport first um, and versus what was uh, predominantly required or popular within the contracts that we were working with. Uh, it was an increase to the gross salaries and not a bonus because you know what happens, you pay for someone's test, you give them a nice chunk of change and then they say, see ya. Taking the money and run. Thanks for the certification and the bump on my, on my resume. Let me go get a better job. Um, so we increased their salary, which essentially takes them a whole year to obtain. So it almost kind of doesn't force them to stay with the company for a year afterwards, but it encourages them to, to stay with the company long term, at least a year after they get the certification. It must be relevant to their position. So me in HR, I couldn't go and request a PMP certification that really wasn't related to my job. I could go out and get it myself if I wanted to, but it wasn't related to my position, so I wouldn't really be eligible for a financial incentive if I got it right away. Uh, it had to be either required by the customer itself or required, required by Catapult, and in this case, the PMP was required by Catapult for all of our project managers. The salary increase was effective immediately upon completion of the credential, so whatever it did, they tested and passed or got their, uh, their information from the certifying body, just if you all Familiar with CISSP takes two or three months to find out whether they pass. Uh, but I made their salary increase effective immediately upon completion of credential. Uh, we also would voluntarily prepay their exam fees for them if, of course, they pre did all the uh, material that I assigned them in, in Catapult eLearning or in Skillport. Uh, otherwise, they'd have to front the cash themselves and get reimbursed if they passed, which most people did. Uh, but that was the other stumbling block for some of these higher profile certifications. Those exam fees can get tough. And when you're living paycheck to paycheck, and if your employer's willing to front the cash for you, then I'm, hell yeah, I'm going to go in and take all those courses. That's fine with me. And then it's a win win for us because it almost guarantees they're going to pass because we know we can document that they're prepared and that they're ready for it. So we're, of course, willing to go ahead and pay their exam fee for them. The incentive amounts that were awarded uh, range anywhere between $500 and $3,000, depending on the difficulty of the exam and its importance to Catapult as a whole. So your PMPs, your CISSPs, uh, they're really, the if you went and get a program manager, which is the one step over the PMP, that one I believe was a $3,000 carrot. And the increase when awarded did not lessen, so when their next uh, annual evaluation came up, we didn't give them a lower percentage increase because they had gotten an incentive earlier. We just went ahead and uh, said, good, good for you, here's your next raise, and it's based off the higher dollar amount with the incentive and added on, it's not based on the amount prior to your test. So you're not penalized. And of course, every quarter I look at the list myself to make sure relevant material is available in Skillsoft. The one thing I have to change very frequently of course, with Microsoft certifications because things constantly are being added or dropped off of Microsoft certification list. The results have spoken for themselves. Since information is still soft in communication, we've added more than 150 individual certifications for employees. In 
for a company that's only 650 employees on average, that's pretty significant. As between professional technical certifications, um, approximately a dozen of those are PMPs. One of them is me, PHR. Uh, we have a first time pass rate of 90% overall, 100% pass rate for PMP using this program that I've adapted from my PMP project and used it, utilized it across all certifications. On average, approximately 40% of all employees annually complete at least one course voluntarily. Of course, we have an annual requirement, but they go in, don't just touch on something and stop and quit. They actually go through the whole course and complete it. The cumulative effect of all this learning and all these certifications for our employees has just been better service to our customers. We're a federal contractor. We don't produce anything. We don't make an item, a tangible thing that someone can measure. Our people and their intelligence and their service are what we're selling. If we don't have our customers, we don't have the good word of mouth from one fed contractor, from one fed agency together, we don't win more work because they all talk to each other. So if we don't do a good job, we're, we're toast. We've managed to put together a game through awards and recognition nationwide. We have very low turnover. Of course, we're going to have attrition with gaining loss of other contracts because we move from small business to medium size. So some things we can't bid on anymore. Uh, but in general, our turnover rates are one of the lowest in the industry. We have and all this certification, and we can document how good we are. This provides documentation and proof to whoever <coughs> we're bidding to. We can meet these requirements. We can exceed your expectations. Uh, when we're submitting proposals for new work and recompeting, it makes us highly competitive. We've managed uh, in 2011 55 million in new work. This does not count stuff that we rebid that we already had and kept. But it was 55 million dollars in new work in 2011, and that's just continuing to increase in 2012. But we've been recognized by Washington Business Journal, Washington Technology, Inc. We've been on the 85,000 list uh, many times, and it just keeps going up. Any questions, concerns? I have my two uh, Skillsoft gurus up here, Ann and Matt. They've been guiding me through this for the last three years. Um, but if you all have any questions, we have time for maybe one or two questions. One or two questions? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. I personally have not had a chance to go through the Knowledge Center. Um, part of my job is professional development. The other part is performance evaluations for 650 employees uh, and uh, hey, benefits hey, administration. Hey, hey, the <laughs> I am the Knowledge Center. <laughs> that I say is it's a tough pill to swallow but it's a lot of work. <laughs> it, it's a lot of work um, but combined with my other assignments and the, the other duties as assigned as an HR generalist, uh, I haven't been able to devote as much time as I would like to just you know, expanding on what we have with our LMS with Skillport. Um, but hopefully as we, if we win this new contract that we're bidding on, that might be something we might have to expand HR, and then I might be able to let go of some of the other things that I do. But it'll never stop. One yes. more question. Have you used the live learning program? The live learning, no. We have not utilized that yet. That's something, again, if I'm able to later on uh, push to getting, if y'all went to some of the corporate buy-in sessions, uh, that would be something I'm going to be working toward. <laughs> Utilizing. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you very David. much that for everybody. Great. Um, the next session is at 1.50, and uh, on page five of the Perspectives guide, Program Guide is a uh, QR code and URL to do um, evaluations. Mm -hmm. So we'd appreciate if you would uh, take, take some time to do that. And I have plenty of business cards if you all want to chat afterward. I'm still here. We're all in lunch, so. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Thank you. Awesome. It's not the yeah. best password.